So if you've spent some time and got quite good at a particular programming language and you're going to be going for a junior developer interview, you might want to think about some of the other skills that employers will be looking for that will help you stand out from the crowd. So in this video we're going to talk about some of the things that you need to know as a junior developer other than a programming language which will help you get your first position. So I'm going to split this video into two sections. The first are going to be focusing on things that I think are essential for you to get your first position and the second part will focus on the nice to know things that will help you stand out when you go for interview. So the first two essential things are arguably things that come with a whole coding suite when you're learning a particular language like JavaScript for example and the first thing I'm going to mention is to have a good understanding of the command line. So as I say, arguably this is something that you'll pick up when you're doing coding anyway, but having a knowledge of the command line and how to move up and down a directory and install files and install your dependencies for your project is pretty much an essential skill. So alongside knowing how JavaScript works, for example, it's good to have a strong knowledge of the command line so that you can use that when you're setting up and managing the projects that you're creating. So you don't really need to be a super whiz on the command line, just need to know the basics and how to do some simple tasks. And luckily it's probably one of the things that you're already doing, but if not, it's actually quite easy to pick up those basics quite quickly. So the second essential thing, which again wraps into this whole suite of coding tools, is to have some knowledge about version control and specifically Git. So if you're going to be working as a junior developer, you'll definitely be working with other people as well. So you'll need to be able to use a version control system to work on a particular project. So it'll allow you to work on your specific part of the project and then merge it into the rest of the project later on. So Git is going to be used by the majority of businesses that you're going to be applying for. So it's worth spending some time, even if you can just add files into a repository and, and merge them up into a remote branch and possibly look at how the pull request process works and that'll get you set up ready so that when you do get your first position, you'll be ready to start working within that team straight away. So the next essential skill is to have good problem solving skills. So having good problem solving skills is essential as a junior developer because you're going to be presented with various different problems with the projects that you're working on and you need to be able to work through them systematically, especially when bugs or errors come up or even if you're just struggling to think of a good implementation of a particular feature. So you might think that problem solving skills isn't something you can directly work on to improve or get better at. And although there might be courses out there that focus solely on improving your problem solving skills, I think the thing that you can do for a junior developer is to actually just practice lots of different problems. So whether that's going through exercises and working on problems directly, or just going through tutorials where you're building something and you might encounter problems when you're doing that, and once you've got those problems in front of you, working through them bit by bit is helping to improve your problem solving skills. And it's definitely something that will improve over time, but you can do certain actions to help improve those skills, which is mainly in the form of just doing some practice. So the final essential skill I'm going to mention is probably one that you think you can't improve in any way, but it's to have good patience and persistence. So patience is definitely a quality that you've either got or you haven't. And if you've been working with coding languages for any period of time, you'll realize whether you're a patient person or not, especially when you come across a particularly tricky problem. But with the persistent side of things, it definitely comes down to willpower and, and how long you can stick at a problem before you actually finally give up. And that's the key thing about this skill is not to actually give up on any problems that you encounter. I can recall several problems in the past that have been particularly tricky and have taken days to solve. And just that mentality of not giving up on a particular problem is definitely a strong quality to have as a junior developer. So let's recap our essential skills. We need to know about the command line. We need to know about Git. We need to have good problem solving skills. And also we need to have our persistent mindset where we don't give up on our problems. So let's have a look at some of the useful and nice to know things as a junior developer. And the first thing is to have a bit of design skill and you don't need to be a whiz at Photoshop and be able to create pixel perfect representations of websites, for example. You might be handed a wireframe for a project, for example, and there's not really much design on how things should be presented and laid out. So again, you could go out and get a Photoshop course on how to create website mockups, for example. But I think as a junior developer, it's sufficient to actually just have a bit of practice. So you can actually get some of those mockups that yourself, some pre-built PSD or image files, for example, and then go ahead and convert them from those static formats into a HTML document. So as long as you've got a bit of an idea of how to put something together that looks okay, and by doing that, you'll just have a bit of knowledge about how to actually put together a design. 
and get used to creating some of the common components like headers and menus for example, so you can create your own if you're asked to do so on a project. And another useful skill to have is to know about infrastructure. So what I mean by that is be able to actually deploy the code that you've written on your computer to a server somewhere or some cloud service. Things like AWS and DigitalOcean being the most popular, for example. And if you can talk about those services and maybe how you've used them in your projects with your employer in the interview, then that's definitely going to be a massive benefit because they're going to know that you've got those skills and that knowledge about how those cloud technologies work. Of course, if you know your employer uses a specific infrastructure provider like AWS, then you can always do a bit of homework before the interview to work out how you would actually deploy the code that you've written in a similar way that they would to that provider. So a really useful thing to know about is to have some understanding about how build tools work. So think things like Webpack, for example. So if you've got an understanding about how these tools work and how you might use them in your projects to bundle your files together, then that's going to be really useful and really attractive to your employer, because no doubt with the larger projects that they're going to be working on, they'll have some sort of build process set up to deal with all of the intricacies of pulling all of the project files together. So I think I've said this a few times already in this video, but you don't need to be an expert in a particular build tool. In fact, later versions of Webpack and similar are pretty much zero configuration. You don't really need to do too much with them, but it's more having that understanding of what it is and what it can do for you within your project that'll make it a really useful skill for you and for your employer. So putting the two previous skills that we've just talked about together, one really useful thing for you and your employer will be to have an understanding about how continuous integration or continuous deployment works with the particular technologies that you're familiar with. So in a nutshell, this is just basically taking the code that you've built and automatically building it somewhere on some kind of cloud service, testing it to make sure it's all okay and all working, and then deploying it to a particular provider. So if you do have the time to understand about continuous integration and deployment, it's definitely time well spent because it'll give you the ability to deploy the projects that you've been working on to your portfolio, for example, but no doubt your employer will have their own continuous deployment process set up and just having knowledge about how that process works will be really useful for you when you start that role. So one final useful skill to have is to understand about project management and the associated processes that are involved in that. So most businesses will do some form of project management, usually based around agile in some kind of loose manner. So it's worth your time understanding what agile is what some of the processes are around it, and what you could expect to be doing in an agile environment working as a developer. So alongside agile comes some project management tools as well, one of the biggest ones being Jira from Atlassian. And there's also some other smaller tools like Trello and Pivotal, for example, which lots of businesses use to manage their projects as they're going through this agile process. So you'll often see this listed on job adverts, like being able to work in an agile environment. So if you don't know what Agile is, it's worth looking into what it is and what it would be like to be working in that environment as a developer. Because if this is your first position and you're being asked if you've ever worked in an Agile environment, you'll have to say no. But if you can talk around some of the processes and things that are involved with Agile, then your employer will know that if they employ you, you'll know what's going on when you're put into that environment. So just to sum up those nice to have skills, we're talking about the design, infrastructure, build tools and continuous deployment and project management skills. But just to finish off this video, I'm just going to say that there's one thing that's really useful for you within your career in general as a developer, and that's to have a broad knowledge of technology. And what I mean by that is just going out and learning about different technologies and platforms that are available as solutions to various different problems. For example, if you're in a discussion at work and someone's suggesting you should use Redis for a particular task, if you've got no idea what Redis is, then you've got no place to actually take part in that discussion and argue whether that's the right solution for that particular problem. So this is just something that comes over time by reading and learning about different things that are available to you. And it's definitely something that will accelerate when you're around other developers and other like-minded IT individuals. So once you're in your first position, it's definitely something to take advantage of and to make sure you're building that technical knowledge for yourself in the future. So there you have some essential and useful things to know as a junior developer.